to the EEPROM 9 and today's video is something a bit different to what we normally cover a bit of vintage test equipment we don't often cover this kind of stuff and this is an insulation uh, tester that goes up to about 500 volts I love it at 500 volt pressure I'll lift the thing up so it's closer to the uh, camera and hopefully the auto folks will do and you can read what's on there a whole load of patents good luck actually finding anything on them or it's just i don't know how to search patents but i couldn't find anything on them um a place in london that's probably been long dem demolished now i might actually look that up out of pure curiosity but this one's crank handle done by a dymino and we are going to crack it open and show you inside it has this lovely gauge complete with a user guide on how to use it and if we turn up the full speed like this you'll see we go to the infinity the thing can also light neon so let's um, go into our neon box which is depleting at a rather scarily fast rate at the moment with all the bloody neon projects I'm doing before we get into the full technical stuff and it will drop down to the accuracy isn't so great these days so good you can see the neon and it will drop down to about the 100k but it's like an 81k resistor or something like that it's something like that that's on that neon so it's not very um high neon but you know these things weren't built for the accuracy they're built to tell you if there's a problem in your um wiring and there's also something else i actually legitimately want to use to test it for the like 20 of you who actually fucking bothered to watch the um led teardown circuit the led drive you found i was quite impressed with the um quality of construction however we weren't able to test the isolation between live and neutral to the output till now so that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to tie these together. This could damage the power supply, but to be honest, it, I think it's a worthy sacrifice for the education of all uh, involved. Let me just... Um, the wires are not being very compliant with going in the twisty thing. Unfortunately, it's not banana jacks like I thought it would be. No, I guess they didn't have banana jacks when this thing was made, which turns out to be in the 1940s. Yes, this thing fought in the war. It's a World War II veteran. Okay, that's the... um. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> I'm trying to get them both in and only one wants to go in. Hang on, there we go, so we got it. No, that doesn't mean you rotate around. There, there we go. So now we can test the isolation. Now what we want it to do is go into infinity. But will it go into infinity? And it does! It passes mains isolation. You know... Whether it still works, I don't know, but that passes the mains isolation test and I would deem it to be this particular driver to be safe to use. That doesn't smell burnt. I have managed to uh, nuke a few resistors when I was um, repairing it because it didn't arrive working. So yeah, you got a little demonstration of how this works. We will crack it open and show you inside, and then I will show you the schematic because I had to reverse engineer this thing to fix it. And I will also show you some photos of inside, but to do that, we need to go ghetto style. No, we don't do it in editing. No, we don't. We literally show... <laughs> Take it with the camera on this, then show it to another camera. Oh, yes. Proper old school. But hey, that um, diminishes editing. Let me pause while I get the screws out. So, but a moment later, and less for you guys, we have the little screws out, which are old school security screw bits. Which, if the uh, camera would have the um, 
courtesy to focus you will see and then the actual bolt goes up through the middle so you'd need like a um well you don't need a security bit because i managed to do it undo it with the wrong uh, bit i just abused my calipers they were not happy but they had no choice in the matter under here is your um calibration uh, for the meter where the little um analog meter twisty thing is can you see it through that hole no you can't you should be able to see it now theoretically now i would actually quite like to show you the gearbox because the gearbox is quite interesting when you get up to speed there's a certain clutch that will actually um, start rotating freely and also it will not rotate in the other direction so this has got a interesting clutch mechanism but i haven't figured out how to open up the back bit good job i didn't need to to fix it so when we pull this bit out we get the gauge comes out and this basically this whole section holds the gauge electronics which are held together by these three springs i have no clue why they decided to do it as springs could be for resistance they could be like resistance wire i honestly don't know we have a date of the 21th of the 10th 1940 which would actually go with the um, doubler cap that came out of it which is a uh, 0.1 uh, microfarad or 100 nf uh, 1500 volts dc i didn't have that cap i had to improvise to make it but i love the red but the red is very flaky it's probably lead paint too so yeah i wouldn't recommend giving this to your babies for them to suck on but that is absolutely brilliant you've got this lovely mechanism i not taking any of this apart because I really don't want to break it because this is like a really weird ass gauge mechanism you're not going to find in anything else then if we take this top bit off this would get this gets really interesting we notice there's this paper sheet behind it now I will spare you the pain of watching me undo screws I'll be but a moment so when you take that off you should be able to see and let me see if I can zoom down on this and hopefully that is at least somewhat visible for you but basically we've got a whole little calibration sheet where we've got 100,000 100, ohms 100 which is 100k basically a whole load of stuff the signature of the person and then 5th of the 11th 1940 so yes this thing was actually made during World War II. So this thing helped with the war effort. And then if we um, open it up like this, so you can see inside, and it's a bit difficult to get it so the camera can see inside. But down the bottom there, oh no you don't. You got the uh, two terminals, which are screw terminals, but down the bottom there, amongst you got a whole load of resistors, some capacitors up here, which are explained because these ones are my additions to replace the original ones that you can see down the bottom there, down the back. This is where this is one of those situations where having more than like two arms, you know, having an extra set of arms would be really useful. But yeah, you can see those brown things. They turn out to be wire round resistors. I didn't know what the hell they were when I first saw them. I even ended up discussing it on Facebook groups. But here's your dynamo motor. You got your main like filter cap that filters out the AC noise from the motor, which actually went up to like 120 something volts because open circuit, this little dynamo will generate 550 volts. And a current decent enough to burn out resistors, as we've discovered. So, yeah, you could have some fun with this, zinging people. Not recommended, because I don't actually know how dangerous it is. But, you know, it's half the fun, isn't it, when things are dangerous. 
And then, of course, they're going, these two are in a serious pair, these two are in a serious pair, and then they hook up to the um, gauge, and I'll show you on in the schematic next. So let me just put this all back together. And uh, I'll just pause it while I do that. First, let's give you a good view of the inside. So down the bottom of the uh, resistors I was talking about, here's a close-up. I took and you can kind of see the uh, 50,000 ohms because they're each uh, 50k each and surprisingly accurate on the singular one that worked which is instantly that one this is when I removed them as I took them out to try and figure out what the hell they were and then here's another shot showing the wire around so they're very finely wound and then the value on them I don't know what the W I'm guessing that's like six watts or something and then we've got the um, actual uh, calibration sheet that you can actually see and now I will show you the schematic so here's the schematic basically of how the thing works so what we essentially have is a uh, meter which kind of has a, almost like two separate taps which will drive the meter different ways depending on the voltage, because it basically reverses the voltage through the uh, meter. So, okay, duh, 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 duh. Now, here we have the DC generator, which can generate uh, over 500 volts in total. It's actually just under when it's gone through the um, resistors. It's like 470. I'll actually show you in a bit, because I can do that. We have our main filter cap, which filters out the 100 and something, 120 odd volts of... Um, AC noise and brings it down to a more acceptable 15 volts although I was only able to measure it with my fluke meter this one would spaz out when it was in the AC range for some weird reason the fluke meter just worked so when it, the uh, circuit is open the voltage will go through the meter and intra actually another thing I'd like to hit no, is the earth is actually the positive terminal the line or negative and uh, live is the negative because it's dc it doesn't do it. it's not an ac generator it goes through so uh so when you've got your nothing on the circuit basically has no place to go because this isn't connected so it will go around here through the meter down through these uh, wire round uh, resistors, which I am pretty certain are 50k, but I haven't actually removed them to confirm. Loop round here and go back up into the positive side of the motor. Now, I'm not sure exactly what defines this, but when it's um, actually connected to the circuit, it will go through the meter. So there might actually be some... Uh, slight resistance tolerances in the meter i'm not taking the meter apart because these are so delicate they're super easy to break go through the meter it will go down through these two 50k resistors down through the circuit under load and then back through the the uh, ground probe and into the dc generator back into the air uh, well, positive end of it. This uh, capacitor is literally just to suppress noise. You can run it without it. And it doesn't really affect the output too much. Interestingly, now I'm not sure why, but I think I know why they did this now. We have a uh, separate thing where the negative goes out to the chassis and actually, and it doesn't actually cook to the outside chassis. It's actually isolated from this which is made out of some sort of cast material. I'm not sure exactly what. It doesn't look like aluminium. It might be aluminium. But it actually goes through to a connector that is actually external and is specifically here. So I reckon this is purely a test point to test the generator itself, that it actually works. So I suspect that, you know, you just put it on. It just allows you to test the meter, basically. 
It's also where you can get the raw output from the uh, meter. Although you're always going to have this load running on it under normal circumstances unless you disconnect these resistors internally. So, let's actually show you the voltage output from this thing because it's quite interesting. You know, this is a little handheld thing. That I even got it to light up one of the sodium vapour bulbs, although it only lit it up like the... Uh, a bit better than the inverter did, actually. So it's definitely got more in the way of current output than uh, what one of these little inverter drivers can do. And yeah, here's a sneak peek at a project that may or may not appear on YouTube. Appear on YouTube. So yeah, we'll put the probes the wrong way round for, for DC. So we're going to get a minus on the uh, meter, but that doesn't really matter, to be honest. I'm going to put the meter up here, though, so you guys can see it. I'll show you what it does on the meet, uh, AC range. I bet this is where it... Yeah, here we go. I can actually get it to shut off. As you can see, for some bizarre reason, now I've added the capacitor in circuit, this cannot handle the AC. Probably because it's like super noisy and only the fluke can. I should try a few other meters just for curiosity's sake. But on the DC range, we're up to 476 volts. And yes, that is no joke. So it's slightly under when you've got all the resistors and that loading it down. So you never know, I could, I could potentially have some fun with this thing. But that is a quintessentially how it works. And there's definitely more in this circuit that is focused in the meter. There's definitely more when it comes to how this meter itself is calibrated. But I am curious about, but I don't want to destroy the meter. They're just one of those unobtainium parts. Much like the meter is in my, um, that analog, uh, survey meter I did a tear down of that no one watched again, because apparently radiation equipment isn't interesting, I guess, because, well, well, not finding radiation equipment interesting? Well, you're all weirdos. <laughs> How can you not find that interesting? What's wrong with you? But yeah, this is the insulation tester. We've run some tests. It works, because I fixed it. I did have to um, bypass these uh, resistors, each with a... I only had access to 83k power resistors. 82k, actually. 5% tolerance, but that doesn't really matter. You know, you got access to what you got access to. I will try and find some, like, 50 or 100k power resistors. But it might turn out those kinds of parts are unobtainium, or unobtainium for a sensible price anyway. But so far they've been in the category of unobtainium, so that's fun. So these might be a permanent addition. And also the other thing that was wrong with it, aside from this capacitor basically being buggered because it's from the 1940s, although I'm not going to throw it away because it looks really cool. Maybe I'll put it on display somewhere with its lead paint gloriness. If it is lead paint, which it probably is from the era it's from. Which is all flaking off everywhere. It's made a mess over my bench already. That's alright, my hoover's got a heap of filter, so I can just hoover it up. But yeah, I had to replace those. And the uh, DC generator, I basically had to take apart the back with the commutator section exposed so I could clean it with just some standard alcohol spray which in this case is lens cleaning spray so yeah standard alcohol spray wound it round a few times sprayed it on while winding it round fixed it all up good and proper which is what we like to see and for now thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed and as an extra note this thing fitted a requirement of actually needing one of these combined with the fact it was dirt cheap, it was just like no-brainer for me. Dirt cheap and I want one, an insulation tester. Because sometimes you want to test stuff like this to make sure it's actually safe. Because, yeah. Thanks for watching.